Hello and welcome to this edition of Market Guru. Joining me today on the show is Fawzi Iksan, who's the Senior Economist at Standard Charter. Thanks very much, uh, Fawzi, for coming by and sharing your thoughts with our viewers here in India. My first question to you, we've seen uh, some developments overseas, the US as well as uh, the European uh, Central Bank. Uh, what, are, what is your reading of what's really going on as far as Europe and US is concerned? If you could first articulate that a bit for us. Right. Uh, basically, the uh, euro situation has deteriorated, and that prompted the ECB to make a statement that it will do uh, anything that it can do to save the euro. Now, uh, one has to differentiate the issues uh, of Europe uh, between the short term and the long term. In the short term, it's a question of market sentiments. Market sentiments have been uh, hammered by the inability of the EU, uh, the ECB, and the IMF to contain the problems over the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, issues that could have been uh, solved uh, through better coordination among the 17 uh, uh, Euro nations uh, was not really uh, properly uh, done. Uh, and therefore, uh, it has uh, created a crisis of confidence uh, for the short term. Now, in the long run, uh, fundam economic Fundamentals, uh, structural economic reforms must be must be undertaken in in Europe, especially in Southern Europe. I.e., uh, social security uh, spending has to be cut uh, and taxes raised. Uh, so, in the long run, uh, more structural reforms are needed. In the short run, uh, the, what the ECB has said has uh, temporarily calmed the market. And what about uh, the U.S. for Z? How is that economy looking to you right now? I mean, uh, the, the U.S. economy is, is likely to be uh, better off compared to that of Europe. Uh, basically, uh, the uh, crisis of uh, 2008 and 2009 uh, has really uh, pushed the uh, U.S. government and, and the uh, U.S. central bank to do more compared to uh, their counterparts in Europe. Uh, that said, uh, we don't believe that uh, the global economy will be in a recession this year. Uh, we expect the global economy to grow by 2.6 percent uh, this year uh, compared to a contraction of 0.8 percent in 2009. So uh, we don't expect the, 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 the problems that the investors face uh, this year will be as severe as, as those uh, we, uh, we, we, we saw in the second half of 2008. So given this backdrop, uh, Fozzi, how are you looking at emerging markets? Are they looking uh, far more attractive in comparison uh, to, say, Europe and U.S.? How are you seeing fund flows moving uh, towards emerging markets? We'll uh, talk about India in a bit, but first a more broader view on emerging markets and how they're looking in comparison to the developed markets. Right. I mean, if, if you... Uh, break down uh, the, the world economies into various blocks. Uh, clearly, uh, Asia, excluding Japan, is growing at a much faster pace than the rest of the world. Uh, we expect this year Asia's GDP growth to be around 6.5% versus 2.6% globally. And Asia is growing uh, faster than uh, Latin America, uh, Africa, and the Middle East. On top of that, uh, Asia, excluding Japan, is uh, running a current account surplus uh, compared to the other regions. Plus, Asia is uh, facing less inflationary pressures to uh, the other uh, blocks. And therefore, uh, we expect that uh, economic performance, and including uh, uh, corporate earnings performance, uh, will, uh, in Asia, uh, will be better uh, compared to uh, those in the Middle East, uh, Africa, and Latin America. So, Fozzy, within Asia, which would be your top three markets which would look most attractive to you at this point of time? I mean, if, if you look at, for example, uh, China. Uh, China, we expect uh, a soft landing. We expect GDP growth to be just 8.2% uh, uh, lower than the 9.2% recorded last year. Uh, even India, uh, in spite of its uh, problems, uh, in spite of the perception, perception, investor perception that uh, reforms uh, are, uh, are slow and infrastructure is weak, India is still expected to grow uh, by 6.2% uh, this year. Uh, Indonesia is expected to grow by 6% this year. So uh, these are the economies, by and large, that are rel relatively insulated from uh, the global economic slowdown. 
And as we also witnessed in 2009, these three economies were relatively sheltered uh, by the uh, global recession, uh, primarily because uh, they have large domestic markets. And therefore, those economies in emerging markets that have large uh, domestic markets, large population, and expanding middle class are, li are likely uh, to be uh, relative winners compared to the rest of the, economy, uh, the global economy. That's interesting because what you're really saying is India and you, uh, you know, articulated and we'll talk a little bit more about that, uh, despite the problems, continues to remain one of your favorites as far as Asia is concerned. Is that right? That's right. I mean, if, if you look at uh, the uh, Indian equity market performance, for example, uh, uh, the, in the year to date, it's gone up by 11%. Uh, which means that uh, in spite of its problems, investors still uh, give India the benefit of the doubt. Uh, granted, India, with its uh, 1.2 billion uh, people domestic market, is one of the largest uh, domestic markets in the world. And it's, uh, if, you, if you look at the banking sector, for example, bank credit is about 60% of GDP. It's got, more, uh, it's got room for growth. Uh, it's not uh, completely uh, over-levered. And uh, given uh, the potential that in the next uh, five to ten years, infrastructure development will be accelerated, and given the hope that the economic reforms will be introduced in the next two or three years or so, primarily because of investor pressure, uh, we, one cannot be too pessimistic about India. Hmm. When you say uh, the problems that exist, according to you, which would uh, those two or three prominent uh, problems you would like to see addressed uh, here, as far as India is concerned, we do know there have been concerns on inflation, uh, there have been concerns of growth slowing down, there have been uh, concerns on policy inaction. Uh, if you were to articulate one or two uh, problems to your mind, which, you know, according to you, should be rectified before people start looking back at India favorably, what would those be, Fozzi? Okay. Now, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's be clear that... Uh, Whatever happens, even without uh, sufficient economic reforms, even without an acceleration in infrastructure development, uh, just by having uh, more stability uh, in the euro uh, area, uh, just by having a, a deceleration of the uh, euro crisis, we can expect more capital inflows into emerging markets, including India. Now, of course, if we have more uh, reforms, now particularly, I would say, infrastructure development, uh, if, if India can uh, assure investors that it can uh, supply adequate uh, power, uh, if, it can, if India can assure investors that uh, road infrastructure, land infrastructure will be improved in the next five to ten years or so, then uh, automatically foreign direct investment will accelerate because of the nature of the large domestic market that India enjoys. So what you're really saying is that uh, currently the potential or the scope, uh, even in the cu current situation, we've seen some very good inflows coming in as far as uh, the last month was concerned. What you're really saying is that investors, despite the fact that these are the issues which India faces, uh, we are not all that cheap anymore in valuation terms, we still have it in us to attract foreign capital, portfolio investment. Yes, I mean... Uh don't forget that we do expect that the global economy to recover next year. Uh, we do expect that the euro situation uh, within the next 12 months uh, would more or less uh, be, be a lot better. Uh, and that would accelerate capital inflows into emerging markets. And don't forget that uh, over the last two years or so, uh, global liquidity has accelerated, uh, primarily because uh, global central banks in their efforts to uh, minimize uh, the, the impact of the global economic slowdown on, on the real economy, on the, on the corporate sector, have been cutting interest rates and they have been pumping liquidity. And such excess liquidity uh, has not been entirely uh, absorbed by the real economy of the world. And don't forget that the real economy of the world is actually slowing down. And therefore, as the situation in Europe uh, stabilizes, this excess liquidity that is currently being parked in the cash market, in the money market, in, in central banks, and in the U.S. Treasury market will be unleashed. And where will this global, uh, global, equity, global liquidity be unleashed to? It will be unleashed to emerging markets, those economies with uh, higher GDP growth than uh, global GDP growth, and those 
economies uh, that have a higher interest rate than a global interest rate. And I would say India, Brazil, Indonesia would be some of these countries. Mm. You mentioned a little earlier, Fozzie, the figure of 6.2 as far as India's uh, growth could be for uh, this year. So do you believe that this ugly number of 5.3 that we saw recently coming in was more the bottom and we would be somewhere in that 6 to 6.5 kind of a range of growth? Is that your view? Uh, we, we expect this year India's GDP growth to be 6.2% and next year to rise gradually to 6.8%. Uh, and on the back of uh, for, uh, lower uh, global commodity prices, and as well as uh, uh, better uh, global economy. Hmm. Let me get your thoughts on uh, the currency as well, because that's been, uh, you know, the rupee has depreciated sharply. Of course, uh, it has stabilized a bit at those levels. We've not seen that kind of volatility of late. Uh, what's your view on uh, the currency as far as India is concerned? I think there are issues as far as uh, the rupee is concerned. The first one is the current account deficit, which is well, more than 3% of GDP. And the second one is the fiscal deficit, uh, which is uh, an, an combined uh, be between both uh, national and regional governments would be more than 8% of GDP. Uh, now, having said that, as I said before, uh, if investors can be assured that uh, uh, reforms are being, being implemented and infrastructure projects are being, are being built, and if the global situation, especially the euro situation, uh, stabilizes, then we can expect the rupee to, be, to, be, to stabilize at the current level. And of course, once uh, capital inflows accelerate, uh, then we can expect the, the, the rupee to, uh, uh, to slowly appreciate in line with uh, other Asian currencies. Because we do expect that uh, in the second half of this year, uh, as the euro situation stabilizes, uh, more capital inflows into Asia, and we expect uh, appreciation in the Chinese uh, yuan, in the Korean won, in the Indonesian rupiah, the Malaysian ringgit, by and large, uh, the Asian currencies. Especially those uh, currencies of the economies that have uh, current account surpluses. All right, Fozzie, we leave it there. Thank you very much once again for coming by and sharing your thoughts and perspective with our viewers here on Bloomberg UTV.